my first job that I just stumbled into was on an HBO show called Bored to Death. And I was got... That, was that comedy? It was or? a comedy, <clears throat> yep. And it starred Jason Schwartzman and Zach Galifianakis. Oh, oh, great. Yeah, wow. and Ted Danson. Great. It's great. Yeah, that was it for me. And I was very nervous because um, I respected those guys very, very much and didn't even know what it meant to like stand on a mark. Yes, it's really so faking it's all, it. It's when it's for the yeah for the first time, <laughs> yeah. fake it till you make it. Did that. you ever feel that sort of imposter syndrome? Oh God, yeah, I still feel it now. Yeah. It's funny. It's no matter how much you do, you always get to the end of a, a film and you think, is this going to be the last one? You know, am I? And you always have that period of unemployment in between, and and you you do feel like you keep going back to square one. Weirdly, yeah. Even though I've been doing it for about, yeah fifteen fifteen years. It's, That's a yeah. lot. Yeah. And you still feel? Uh, yeah, totally. Even now. Like, <laughs> Do you feel like that's kind of good? Uh, I think so. I guess it keeps you... Um, I, I guess if you get, get complacent, then you would... Uh, that, that's not a good thing. I think having nerves and that gives you adrenaline and, and being scared is probably when you're doing something where you're pushing yourself in some way. Yeah. Um, what's your, um, what was your worst <laughs> audition? I think because my way in to to where I am now. Now I, I sort of feel like I'm here. It feels pretty good. But the way in felt like very zigzaggy. And for a while I was auditioning for commercials and I didn't have like a really a theatrical agent. Um, and I had to audition for a cleaning product, a toilet cleaning product. <laughs> and um, they lined up all the girls, which first of all is, an, is like you're standing in a line of women Oh, um, is sucks. all yeah, and all immediately I rageful. Yeah, I feel yeah. rage, and um, they, they were like, "So, ladies, everybody has an invisible toilet seat, and the product is so good that you are going to lick the edge of the toilet seat because it's oh so clean. Goodness. But don't no take your eyes way. off the camera. It's, it's pretty demeaning. Like, yeah, actually, for me, the most demeaning <clears throat> part is the eye contact." That is porny well, to me, and sexual. I don't understand yeah, why. Don't, don't <laughs> but it just, I was just like, I'm not, I went to college. Uh, yeah, like, I don't yeah, want to do this. I don't want to be doing this. I, I can't. And um, I, I left. I took myself out of the lineup, and I didn't oh, do the that's, audition. That's really brave. There are so many moments that I felt like in, at the start of my career that was like, if you don't do this, you're done. You know? Yeah. And it's just, that's not true. But and how was uh, how was Obvious Child? What was how did that how did that come about? Well, um, in two thousand and nine, Gillian Robespierre, who wrote the film, came to a stand up comedy show that I was doing, and we didn't know oh. each other. We were just strangers, and um, we had a friend in common, and she was she had written the sh the short film, and she was like, "Do you think that that comedian would would be interested in this?" And um, when she she wrote me the email that was like, I wrote this thing. It's about a woman who gets pregnant and has an abortion on Valentine's Day. Yeah. And I remember thinking <laughs> like, like, perfect. <laughs> huh. You know, I don't, I don't like to be shocking just to be shocking. I, I don't want to be cheap in my comedy and was just like, I'm not really sure that I, I don't want to be rough. I, not in that way. And then I read the script and it was very thoughtful and totally other than what I had expected. So we made this short film and, and we really enjoyed it and we liked each other. And then Gillian and Elizabeth Holm, the producer, developed it for like four years. And then we scraped together a tiny bit of money in 18 days. Oh my goodness. And shot it very privately. Like, and so, you know, no trailers. Like sometimes even shooting places where the bathroom yeah. was broken. Yeah, and just making it, it. making it work with what you have. And yeah. did you, and did with the stand-up, did you, did that come out of, was that improvisation or was that already all in the in the script? Because I love the, the humor is so, as you say, it's like, it's really um, ca caustic. It's like, it's yeah. tough, her, her it stand up. Is. And I love it that her, um, the, the man she meets is the right person because he can accept that. He right. He can accept how confessional her, her comedy is. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think you're right. I think, well, Gillian wrote the stand up based off of what she had sort of seen me do. I think she was, my own personal stand-up is, is pretty, um, pretty open, open-hearted and a bit boundaryless. Yeah, But, yeah. you know, not abusive. And I don't, I think, you know, when people come and see my stand-up, they expect 
to be entertained and not to be abused in any way. I, I just don't, I don't like that. But um, she wrote the stand-up, it was like 45 minutes long. And, <laughs> and <laughs> that's was, what, is that usually what a, a stand-up is no. like? A session is like, I mean, usually 10 it's, minutes or yeah, something? Yeah, 10. Usually it's 10. Usually yeah, I 45 go, minutes is a long time, isn't it? That's a long it? Yeah. time. It's a lot of material. <laughs> and um, she wrote it and I said like, well, this is incredibly funny and I get it and I want to do it, but it's going to be like half of your movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like me talking about dirty underwear and I'm pretty sure we're trying to do something else than just yeah, that. Yeah, there's another, there's a whole other plot with a guy and abortion. Yeah, there's yeah. other yeah, stuff, yeah. you know, in life besides just what happens um, to our underpants. And I think that's important. Although that is the best opening line of any film I've ever seen because it's so true. <laughs> it really is. And it's, I watched it with my 86 year old grandmother. Oh, and that's, I was always, like, that's always the person who's going <laughs> to test, be a good test. Like, what's going to happen? And she was just sitting there. She was laughing. And then I she just. she loved it. She really was focused on how much she liked my hair. Which is great. I was like, if that's what you yeah, feel, I am ex exactly. So bad. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's funny when um when your family watch things and they're like, I thought the costumes were amazing. It is. Like, weird. are they trying to say something? You know, that yeah. Are they trying to imply they didn't like the movie? I loved your performance in this movie. Thank it's beautiful. You. And um, I cried a lot <laughs> while I watched it, and um, I was also really, really inspired by the complexity of Jane. She's not a martyr in any way. Um, she's very smart and she acts out of love uh, for the most part. Was it important to you to make sure that you that you showed her uh, sensitive and, and strong at once? I don't know if that's sort of a plain yeah. question, well, a boring question, but they both exist at once so beautifully in your performance. Well, I, I, feel, I, I feel that that's what you're always looking for, isn't it? You don't just want to play a tough, tough female character right. or someone who's very vulnerable. You know, it's that you want to play someone who's got everything and show different shades of that. Um, and, and that, and it's not every script that will allow you to do that. And with Jane, it was exactly that. There's a, she has this incredible toughness and, and inner strength, but she lo she's completely in love with this man and will you know, and it's beyond a superficial love. It's it's a, it's a very it's very deep rooted in her. So it was yeah. It's always trying to balance those two things. But is that something? Are you are you ever conscious of that going in? Do you like? Is it important that the characters liked, or do you kind of think that's mm. not how you you um, you want to think of it? You just get sort of in, in inside her, and then whether she's liked or not is up to the audience. Right. Well, there's a bit of that. I think. I think with Donna, when I when I read the script, I liked her. I'm different. I'm different than her, but I really, really connect to her. Um, I'm a comedian and she's a comedian, but I'm not. I'm not a New Yorker. I'm a person who's you know like from a haunted house in Massachusetts, and I have two artist parents that have been married since they were almost teenagers. And Donna is like a city kid, she's yeah. a child of divorce, and um, she's got her. She's got her defenses up, hasn't she? She does, and you she can feel really. That does not have control of her nature. But I think those are all beautiful flaws. That's what I love, that's what I loved about it though. Yeah. She, she is, at moments she, um, she can be quite unlikable, you know? And that's, a, she's, she's got, there's a strength in that. Yeah. You know, she's not going around trying to please everyone. That's I what guess, I really liked about her. I'm glad. Yeah, I don't know. I, glad, I guess it's like a, a little bit of it is not first and foremost, is everyone going to like this character? Will she be sort of popular? But will they like watching her? Because there's a lot of movies that um, I like to watch because the performances are so interesting, like you know, The Shining. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but, it, I don't but it's not about. A, yeah, yeah, it's not necessarily likability. <laughs>